Inside of Database Health Monitor, there's an option to run, if you right click here, thing called the SQL Performance Monitor, which is something I built and added into Database Health Monitor in 2022. You can right click on any of your existing instances in Database Health Monitor and get it, or, and that will, then it'll prompt you for a connection to your SQL Server, connect. The other, oh, popped up on the other screen. The other way you can get to it is from the Tools menu. You can, you can also go to Tools SQL Performance Monitor from there. What this came from is a lot of clients I work with have hired me to monitor and watch their system when something is going on, a big event or right after a migration or sometime that they have specific concern over performance. Maybe it's a, the day that they announce their quarterly sale or things like that. What we do is we have the I built this specifically to help in that environment. And the way it works, you just hit the start monitor. It's running in the background and it's updating things like every second it's updating the number of connections. And I'm just connecting to my desktop here, which has some test code running on it, but it's updating the number of connections and the average CPU and it's every second. And then it's going out and every 30 seconds, it's looking for missing indexes. And it's every about seven or eight seconds, it's looking for blocking queries. Now, missing indexes, if you're familiar with like the SQL Server DMVs that give you the missing indexes, what that does is those will give you all the missing index since, since the server started. This does a comparison and just gives you, gives you the missing indexes that would have helped since I hit that start monitoring button. So if you have a specific pain, a specific slow spot, of something that's going on in your SQL server, well, you can use this to find the missing indexes that will help you right now. The blocking queries, well, before we get to that, we'll let it run for a minute and see if it catches anything. But what it's doing is it's going out and looking for any time that there may be a, a query that's blocking other queries for more than about a half second. And we know in SQL server blocking occurs and it's, it's a good thing because it keeps your data consistent, but it's a bad thing because it slows things down. We'll get to the blocking queries in just a minute, but let me tell you a short story about how I used this yesterday, just yesterday. Yesterday, I was working with a client. They called me, they needed desperate help about a query that was running really slow in their system. And it was an insert. Insert into a good size table, but not, not millions of rows by any means. And we started looking at, okay, so why is your insert statement slow? And what we, what we learned from that, they, they had a bunch of triggers on it. So we looked at the triggers to see if that was the problem. And none of the triggers were the issue. That was what they suspected at first. So then I looked at, well, what's blocking? When you do an insert to a table, it needs to get an exclusive lock in order to insert those rows into the table. But if you have a, another query running that's a select, that's a long running query that has a lock on that, a shared lock, then the insert is unable to get the exclusive lock. So in a normal situation where all your select statements are running really quick, it's not gonna block your inserts. But this was a really long running query that was keeping the insert from happening. So what we found was the problem was not at all with the insert statement, but it was the query that was blocking that was causing the trouble. Well, I was kind of hoping that after we started this, that maybe a blocking query would show up here and it hasn't because this is my dev environment and I've tuned it pretty well. But what we're gonna do, I'm going to force a blocking query. What I have here in Management Studio is my blocking test script and it creates a table, throws a thousand rows into that table, it opens a transaction and then it updates all of those rows and then attempts to select from that. And I'm gonna be one of those developers or testers or DBAs that gets a little bit sloppy and forgets to roll the transaction back at the end of it. You notice what I've got highlighted there when I run it and either forgets to roll it back or forgets to commit it at the end. So I've run that, that one query and it has a transaction open currently, but I look back over here, I'm not seeing any blocking showing up related to that yet. So what I need to do is I need to copy this part here in another window and let's say I'm a different developer on a different server doing something similar. And let's just pretend I actually wanna commit the transaction. When I run this, you'll notice in Management Studio, 
it's just doing an update and then a select and a commit, but it's stuck spinning at this point. And that would be the same as if this was a page on your website or in your application. It's just stuck waiting until this other query either commits or rolls back. But because I forgot to run the rollback and we're pretending I just don't know what I'm doing there, it's going to stay blocking. Now, because of that, what we start seeing over here in the performance viewer is under the blocking queries, we get a list of this here. And when I click on this, it shows down below the block amount. And let me tell you what that block amount means. It just, when I clicked it, it was at six. Now it's at eight. It's running about every seven or eight seconds and checking and counting how many are currently blocked right now. And it's using, in this, in this case, it's the one blocker and the other query that's blocked, which is a total of two queries. And so it increases the block amount by two. Now on a crazy system where you have like a hundred queries being blocked, well, this number could go up really, really fast. When we look at it, we can see from the performance viewer, and we'll just pretend that you'd never seen me in the management studio running those queries. You'd be able to see, well, here's what's going on. Somebody's doing this work on this table. We can see from here, here's the user. I'm logged in with the Windows credentials who's causing the blocking. If you're a DBA and you look at this and this is somebody that really shouldn't be working in your database, well, that's where you have to go chase them down and uh, ask them, why are you doing this? Or it might be as simple as using that test user to figure out, well, what system is it coming from? And this is a bit of a malicious attempt here in the way I'm doing it. But in most of the time, it's not something malicious like that. It's more just, here's a query that's a little bit slow. And because that query is slow, it causes blocking for other things to run. So this tool here, using that blocking option, gives me what I need to be able to go and track this down and do what I can to clear the blocking. Let's say I didn't have... I didn't know this was me in the management studio over here. And I could look and say, okay, well, right here, the blocker is 93. And I could just go open a uh, management studio connection on my own and kill that connection. And it would clear up the blocking and allow you to continue on. But most of the time, what happens is it's not a sort of a fake blocking, like, well, not fake, but a contrived blocking like we've done here, where it's just because of an open transaction, most of the time what you're gonna find is you're gonna find that there's a slow query in here that's the blocker. And the way you're gonna fix it is to go figure out how do I track down that slow query and how do I figure out how to make it faster so that we can figure out how to, well, so it's not blocking as much. Lots of queries running on your SQL server is not an issue, but when you have lots of queries that are hitting blocking, that's when things become an issue because once somebody blocks, let's say it's a select statement that's blocking an insert, then I run a select statement after that. Well, now my select statement is going to be blocked behind that ins insert and then 15 other people run other statements. Suddenly we have a really big blocking tree there where it's one query that's now blocking 15 to 20 or 30 or 50 queries. And that's the point you get to when people describe it as my SQL server is just stuck or hung or not responsive. That's how we catch the blocking. This is a program that with the performance viewer, I generally will let this run for a few hours or I'll let it run overnight, but it's generally not an application that I would let run day after day after day. That would be something different that we'd wanna take a look at. But for someone describing there's a problem right now where the SQL server is not responsive, or if you see that every day around a certain time that it gets slowed down, this is a great tool to track that down. So here, every time we click on the different things, it updates the window down below with the details. If we wanted to look at the indexes that were suggested and see how they relate to the queries we have below, you can get that just by clicking on the side over here where we can click and see the cost. Now the cost numbers associated with indexes are what we get from SQL Server as to the cost associated with queries that would have that would have been helped by this. And that's execution plan cost that we're talking about there. These are pretty small numbers because it's a pretty tuned system I have. But like in the example I was talking about yesterday, it started out and pretty soon we had cost numbers of 
20,000, 30,000, 40,000 that we're racking up here. And we looked at those top indexes that were needed at that point. And by clicking on the different ones, you can see the create script down below. We were able to do quite a bit of tuning just by finding those indexes, considering if they were useful and then adding them and then finding the queries that were slow and doing what we could to speed them up. This tool, the performance viewer is part of database health monitor. And I think it's one of the most valuable pieces to use when you're trying to track down something that's stuck or blocked or why are things running so much slower right now than they were under normal conditions. Now, another thing we have in here is we can hit the reports button and either run the blocking query report or the missing indexes report or the full report. And what that does, it takes it and just formats it over here and in a different format that lists off all of the blocking queries details and all of the missing indexes details. And I usually will go in here, highlight the whole thing and copy that and then paste it off to a Word document when I'm working with a client and then I'll email them that Word document or we'll review it together and figure out how can we work to clear up the issues that are that are causing the blocking or the missing indexes here. One of the things, the reasons I have the connections up top here, this little chart that keeps ticking away, is that oftentimes when you see excessive blocking, it starts clogging up the system and people keep hitting refresh in their browser or attempting to run the query again. And that just causes more and more connections to be backlogged or clogged up waiting for things to happen. So that connection chart across the top really just gives you the ability to see if we're running at a baseline level, like we have been here between like 60 and 80 on my computer. If you suddenly see that starting to increase and increase, then that's a sign that things are blocking and that web pages or applications are just asking for more and more connections because they're all the connections they have are clogged up, blocked, waiting for things to finish. Now you notice here this blocking amount of 78, which is just increased to 80 there. It just keeps increasing over time as long as that's blocking. What I'm going to do is go back over here to the problem when query, and I'm just going to roll back that transaction. And as soon as I roll that back, the query in the other window finishes. And that took seven minutes and 36 seconds to finish. But at this point, our block amount, which is at 80 right now, is going to stay at 80. It's not going to increase anymore until that same query shows up there. This specific performance viewer as part of Database Health Monitor, I have used on a lot of big environments where clients have had perhaps their biggest expected sales day or some type of an event or something that was going to cause them to have far more traffic than they've ever seen. And by using this, I was able to track down either missing indexes that would help that when things went bad, we could apply those to prevent thing, things from being slow again, or we could find the blocking queries. And sometimes it was as simple as killing the one blocking query that was the problem. Other times it was, we had to go in and performance tune it and clear things up. It really depends if that blocking query is an ad hoc query, like the one I ran in the browser, or if it's a query that's coming from some page in your application. That performance viewer was something that I was added to Database Health Monitor in 2022. Quick review, I'll close it out now, but where you get to it, you can get to it from Tools, SQL Performance Monitor, or by right-clicking on an instance in Database Health Monitor and choosing SQL Performance Monitor here, you'll get connected. And then, oh, it's on the other screen. And then once you start it up, you just hit the Start Monitor and it just starts collecting data here over time. It's fine to let it run for an hour or two hours or three hours. Even on a real busy server, it's fine to let it run because what it's doing is it's a pretty light load. It's just saying every second it's saying how many connections are there and what's the CPU. Every seven or eight seconds, it's just asking for the blocking queries. And then every 30 seconds, it's asking for the missing indexes and logging that. That is the performance viewer. I guess before I move on to the next item, any questions about the SQL performance viewer there before I move on? Uh, yes, Stephen, not a question, but uh, it's just uh, information I want to ask that. Uh, 
<clears throat> the performance you are uh, you was uh, showing that uh, there are uh, reports. So, are you reading the DMVs in backend? Uh, so everything that Database Health Monitor does is either running queries or reading DMVs, and yes, I mean that's okay. that's how that's how we get all the data. So when yeah. we run the performance viewer and connect to a database, and I mean the way it gets all the data is either from uh, queries uh, or DMVs, and I mean Perfect. there's no uh, there's no like secret sauce to where the where that comes from. That it's just yeah. the the how it's all built out that uh, is the combination of really kind of what adds the value there. Yeah. So, and the way it used to be before I built this is I would open up like five different versions of Database Health Monitor. I'd have one here running on our what is active report, and I would use the hotkey F5 to refresh it here and there. And then I would go back and I would have another one that was open on the blocking queries page we have, and I would keep refreshing that. And then I would have another query that was open showing different user connections and like here, connections for the total count of connections, or I would also be watching our total connections down, down here at the bottom where it shows 74. And really what I did is I just collected up all those different individ individual report data and built it into this one application that gives me what I need to track those key items on the SQL okay. Server when performance is going on.